All right. People who are nuts about cars or describe themselves as car nuts are probably familiar with bring a trailer. In the old day, you had to go, say, to eBay to sell your car or even to an old-fashioned auction. We just had an old-fashioned auction uh, through Mecom, and they had billions, not billions, millions of dollars in sales. But the industry as a whole is worth billions. And that's where Bring a Trailer comes in. They were founded and created in 2007. I wish it had been around in 2006. I had to sell two Studebakers on eBay. Uh, but let's talk about where they're headed because they are having a banner year. I think a $2 million Porsche just sold. Randy Nunenberg is Bring a Trailer co-founder and president. Prasub Romanian is my fellow car nut. I wish you were around in 2006 because I think I took a hit doing it on eBay. Uh, let me throw the first question out to you though, Randy. What is the attraction? For those of us who like to consider ourselves car nuts, to being able to do it all on your platform. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, a lot of that attraction is just the sort of treasure hunting that people get to do, and that's popular in many different enthusiast segments. Whether you're into you know jewelry or fine art, or we have to be cars. And uh, for the types of cars that we list, which are special things, one-off things, uh, what falls into the enthusiast segment. Um, finding the right one to come up is what causes people every single day to come back to bring a trailer. Hey, Randy Pross here. I have a lot of questions. I wonder, but one is certainly a big picture here. You guys had a huge year last year, you know, nearly a billion dollars in sales. What do you think is driving this big boom in collector cars right now? There's a boom in collector cars overall. Um, some of that was supercharged by the pandemic, but some of that is just people refocusing based on the macro financial environment and wanting to see them as investments. A lot of people see collector cars uh, as a scarce item and it's one that you can actually invest in and at least break even if not make money in while also enjoying it at the same time in a way it's harder to enjoy a, a stock or, or a, you know, a, a gold investment, something like that. So a lot of people use these and park them and care for them and dote on them and their uh, enthusiasm as, as we have helped it to grow uh, makes that for uh, something that can actually be a meaningful investment for them. So Adam mentioned just earlier about this, the $2 million Porsche Carrera GT that sold this week, a record uh, amount for that car. Do you think the market is, you know, there are a lot of enthusiasm, but is it getting overheated? You know, when I talk to small talkers, even big ones, they're a little dismayed by how high these values are, are and how they can't get in. What do you think about that? Well, certainly, I mean, the big ones like that $2 million Porsche you're showing right now certainly get the headlines. Uh, but interestingly, I mean, the average sale price of a vehicle on our site, um, you know, last year in, uh, was uh, about 35000 and did boom to 45000 But it's there's not really a narrative that, oh, all of these are going to be a million dollars and this is only a, a rich person's game. You ask what makes people come to bring a trailer. One of the main attributes is the variety and there's i mean things transacting every single day for you know twenty thousand dollars and less that uh people can sort of get into it at every level there's kind of something for everyone but is it overheated uh, i mean there's a lot of people that are uh really excited about it and aggressive and like i say using it in that those sort of um investment language as opposed to enthusiasm and hobbyist language and there's Thankfully, there's enough vehicles out there. We listed 22,000 vehicles last year, which was a 57% increase over the previous year on our uh, online platform. And we see that much growth again. And there are many, you know, there are millions of interesting vehicles that are out there already on the road. And then manufacturers these days are still producing some interesting ones as well. Randy, this is Emily here. I want to dive a little bit deeper into what you were talking about with accessibility. And have you seen recently any shift in demographics and who's purchasing these cars on your platform or participating in car auctions even more broadly? Or has that target audience really remained relatively steady? That's a super good question. And I think that on our platform, what we have let people do is do it in their pocket, right? I think that the older environment of having to go to a physical car auction, how many people have done that? I mean, that's only really industry people or really deep collectors and that sort of thing. Most people never do that. But um, with our platform being purely online, the accessibility has just ballooned and people that are coming into the uh, hobby, if they call it that, or even just looking to transact for their next vehicle are using our site to be able to do that. So I think we have expanded that sort of accessibility. And so that has made it shift maybe a little bit younger, uh, more technologically savvy, 
um, have different sorts of expectations around like their life around vendors like Amazon, as opposed to their life with vendors like a traditional car dealer. So there are different um, sort of features that are uh, and conveniences that are both expected and, and helpful for the market. So that has led to a shift in a different type of buying audience. You're also providing, though, on the platform the kind of data that people who you call it the hobby, I'll call it the frenzy mania. Um, and I'm looking at the page right now, and I, I put in Studebaker Avanti. Um, and you get the data, real data, on what certain cars that might not have sold but got bid up to, and then those which sold. And unfortunately, we just saw one go for $83,000, so out of my wallet's range. But that's really valuable to not only the buyers, but the sellers. How, how often do you have to explain to a seller? Because you work with the sellers when they list the car. Be realistic about the price. Well, data helps it no longer be mysterious and no longer be based on opinion. The, the car industry and the collectible car industry for so long was you know, held tightly by a small group of experts and you kind of had to succumb to whatever they said. Um, and now, people have a much greater expectation for transparent data. And we wanted to push that forward. So our platform, yeah, every single uh, listing, we've listed over 60,000 vehicles on Bring a Trailer and all of those are permanent. So you can go see the permanent record of all of those in scatter charts and um, you can see all that data. And we kind of model that after sort of a Zillow type marketplace where if you really want to find comps and understand what this is going to take and why one is valuable and why one isn't, um, we think that's positive uh, and that sort of transparency is through the entire site and everything that we try to do because we think that's something that hasn't been in the industry before. So that is, that's fueling uh, a lot of the visibility of our site and, and usefulness of our site to users. Hey Randy, real quick two-parter here. What's next for Bring a Tail Trailer? And also give me, give me one undervalued car that I should keep an eye on. Oh, good ones. Uh, what's next for Bring a Trailer is more just trying to let more and more people use this sort of platform. It, I think the online trust and the online um, reach have both been things that people were dipping their toe into as sort of first timers, but it's really starting to be the norm now. Uh, now that you know, cars, seven figure cars can transact there as well as $5,000 cars, people are seeing it as more universal where previously it might have seemed more niche. So I think our platform uh, is going to see more um, growth in this year and, and the coming years. And just in terms of adoption, it will become, um, it will become the, the regular and, and first choice place to go. So that's in our favor. Uh, in terms of what cars are available, I mean, there's so many different types of models and makes that are out there. Um, I think, I don't know whether you're into sports cars or, or uh, you know, vintage four-wheel drives or European or American stuff, um, but I think that there's been these crazy booms, this hot, hot market for European cars and trucks and those sort of things. Uh, I think American muscle cars have, have sort of trended a little bit behind that. So a lot of people think, oh, everything's, you know, so expensive these days, but you can still get pretty iconic American um, um, V8 cars from the 60s, like a, you know, a 65 Mustang Coupe. Yeah, sure, it's not 10,000 anymore, but it's probably 20 or 25,000 now for a car that is just amazing, right? And Americana and, and it, it Randy, hasn't throw in run away the way some here. of these other ones have. Oh, because I, I've been on your site and I've been on other sites to answer Pross's question and Pross, you know, it's it's not you, you're Mr. BMW Porsche. But oh, easy, okay, I can you. answer that if part you wanna, <laughs> If you wanna, Lincoln's from the early 70s, it's blowing me away, like the car they drive in Schitt's Creek. People are paying 25, 30 grand for these Lincolns, these, you know, these land yachts. But that's another discussion. Pross, you and I will grab a scotch and talk about going, get, go get a 72 <laughs> Lincoln. Uh, Randy Noonberg, Bring a Trailer, co-founder and president. Thank you so much for joining us. Pross, see you in just a bit.